Top 25 AWS Data Engineer Interview Questions and Answers In the competitive landscape of cloud computing, having a strong grasp of AWS data engineering concepts is crucial. This video will present the top 25 interview questions commonly asked in AWS data engineering interviews, along with comprehensive answers. Whether you're a seasoned professional or new to the field, preparing for these questions can enhance your confidence. Join us to explore essential topics that will help you succeed in your AWS data engineering interview journey. 1. What are the key components of AWS Data Pipeline? AWS Data Pipeline consists of several key components that facilitate the orchestration of data workflows. These include data sources, which can be Amazon S3, DynamoDB, or RDS, pipeline activities that define the transformation and movement of data, scheduling, which enables regular execution of data tasks, and monitoring tools that provide visibility into pipeline performance and health. Additionally, AWS Data Pipeline integrates with other AWS services like EMR and Lambda, allowing for scalable processing of large datasets efficiently. This modular architecture provides flexibility for various data processing needs. 2. How do you ensure data quality and integrity in a data pipeline? Ensuring data quality and integrity in a data pipeline involves several strategies. First, implement validation checks at various stages of the pipeline, such as schema validation and constraint checks. Use tools like AWS Glue or AWS Lambda to automate these checks and trigger alerts for any discrepancies. Additionally, establish data lineage tracking to monitor data flow and transformations, ensuring traceability. Regularly conduct data audits and use metrics to assess quality, such as completeness, accuracy, and consistency. Integrate automated testing frameworks to continuously validate data throughout the pipeline lifecycle. 3. Describe your experience with AWS Services for Data Management. My experience with AWS Services for Data Management includes using Amazon S3 for scalable storage, ensuring durability and availability of data. I have utilized AWS Glue for data cataloging and ETL processes, automating data preparation and transformation. Additionally, I have leveraged Amazon Redshift for data warehousing, enabling efficient querying and analytics. Implementing Amazon RDS and DynamoDB has allowed me to manage relational and NoSQL databases respectively. I also focus on monitoring and optimizing data flows using AWS CloudWatch and AWS Data Pipeline to maintain data integrity and performance. 4. How would you design a scalable data warehouse schema on AWS? Designing a scalable data warehouse schema on AWS involves several best practices. First, utilize Amazon Redshift for its scalability and performance. Implement a star schema that separates facts, numerical data, and dimensions, contextual data, for efficient querying. Use distribution styles and sort keys to optimize data retrieval. Leverage AWS Glue for ETL processes, ensuring data is transformed and loaded efficiently. Regularly monitor performance and adjust accordingly, considering partitioning strategies and automated backups for data integrity. Implement security best practices with IAM roles and encryption for sensitive data. 5. What is your approach to handling streaming data in AWS using Apache Kafka? Handling streaming data in AWS using Apache Kafka involves several key steps. First, set up an Amazon MSK, manage streaming for Apache Kafka, cluster to manage and scale Kafka efficiently. Use producers to send data to Kafka topics, where it can be organized and partitioned for better performance. Consumers then process the data in real-time, often utilizing AWS Lambda or Amazon Kinesis data analytics for further analysis. Implement monitoring using AWS CloudWatch to ensure the health of the Kafka cluster. Finally, consider data retention policies and fault tolerance strategies to maintain data integrity and availability. 6. How do you use AWS Glue for data discovery and cataloging? AWS Glue simplifies data discovery and cataloging by automatically scanning data sources, extracting schema information, and creating a central metadata repository in the Glue data catalog. Users can define crawlers that connect to various data stores, such as Amazon S3 or RDS, to discover new data and update the catalog with any schema changes. The data catalog acts as a persistent metadata store, enabling users to search and query datasets easily. This integration enhances data governance and accessibility, streamlining ETL processes and improving analytics capabilities across the organization. 7. Explain the process of implementing data encryption best practices on AWS. Implementing data encryption best practices on AWS involves several key steps. First, identify sensitive data that requires encryption, both at rest and in transit. Use AWS Key Management Service, KMS, to create and manage encryption keys securely. For data at rest, enable server-side encryption for services like Amazon S3, Amazon RDS, and Amazon EBS for data in transit. Use Transport Layer Security, TLS, to encrypt communications between services. Regularly rotate encryption keys and monitor their usage to ensure compliance with security policies. Document your encryption strategy for audits and reviews. 8. How would you build serverless data processing workflows with AWS Step Functions? 
Building serverless data processing workflows with AWS step functions involves defining a state machine that orchestrates multiple AWS services. Start by identifying the tasks your workflow will perform, such as invoking Lambda functions for data processing or using Amazon S3 for storage. You can use the AWS Management Console or AWS SDKs to create the state machine, specifying each step's input and output. Integrate services like AWS Glue for ETL tasks and Amazon SNS for notifications. With step functions, you can manage error handling, retries, and parallel execution, enhancing the reliability and scalability of your workflow. 9. Describe your experience with AWS Data Migration Service, DMS, for database migration. AWS Data Migration Service, DMS, has been instrumental in facilitating seamless database migrations. I've utilized DMS for various projects, migrating on-premises databases to AWS with minimal downtime. My experience includes configuring source and target endpoints, creating migration tasks, and monitoring the migration process through the AWS Management Console. DMS supports heterogeneous migrations, which has allowed us to migrate from different database engines effectively. Handling data type conversions and ensuring data integrity during the migration are critical aspects I focus on, ensuring a smooth transition and reduced operational disruptions. 10. How do you ensure high availability and low latency when migrating a data-intensive application to AWS? Ensuring high availability and low latency during migration involves several strategies. First, utilize multi-AZ deployments to enable fault tolerance and automatic failover of resources. Load balancers distribute incoming traffic, enhancing performance and redundancy. Implement AWS Direct Connect for a dedicated network connection, reducing latency. Employ caching strategies with services like Amazon Elastic Cache to speed up data retrieval. Additionally, leverage AWS auto-scaling to adjust resources dynamically based on demand, maintaining optimal performance. Lastly, conduct thorough testing during the migration phase to identify bottlenecks and optimize configurations. 11. What AWS services would you use to implement a disaster recovery plan with an RPO of 5 minutes and an RTO of 1 hour? For a disaster recovery plan with an RPO of 5 minutes and an RTO of 1 hour, I would leverage Amazon RDS for automated backups and multi-AZ deployments to ensure database availability. Using Amazon S3 for data storage, I would implement versioning and cross-region replication for data durability. AWS Backup can automate backup processes, while Amazon Route 53 would handle DNS failover to reroute traffic in case of outages. Additionally, AWS CloudFormation would facilitate infrastructure as code, allowing rapid recovery and deployment of resources. 12. How would you design a scalable and secure web application infrastructure on AWS that can handle sudden traffic spikes and protect against DDoS attacks? To design a scalable and secure web application infrastructure on AWS, start with an Elastic Load Balancer, ELB, to distribute incoming traffic across multiple Amazon EC2 instances in an auto-scaling group. This setup allows automatic scaling based on demand, ensuring that application performance remains steady during traffic spikes. Utilize Amazon CloudFront as a content delivery network, CDN, to cache content closer to users. For DDoS protection, implement AWS Shield for automatic detection and mitigation of such attacks. Additionally, AWS WAF can be used to create custom rules for filtering malicious traffic. Finally, employ security best practices like IAM roles and security groups to restrict access and protect sensitive data. 13. Which AWS services would you use to build a real-time data analytics platform for processing IoT sensor data? To build a real-time data analytics platform for processing IoT sensor data, several AWS services can be utilized. AWS IoT Core enables secure device connectivity and message ingestion. Amazon Kinesis is crucial for real-time data streaming, allowing continuous data processing. For data storage, Amazon S3 can be employed for raw data, while Amazon Redshift or Amazon Athena can provide analytics capabilities. AWS Lambda can be used for serverless data processing, allowing triggered actions based on incoming data. Finally, Amazon QuickSight can be utilized for data visualization and insights generation. 14. How would you architect a solution for processing and analyzing large volumes of financial transaction data in real-time on AWS? To architect a solution for processing and analyzing large volumes of financial transaction data in real-time on AWS, leverage AWS Kinesis for data ingestion. This service allows you to stream data from various sources. Use AWS Lambda for serverless processing, allowing real-time transformation and enrichment of the data. Store processed data in Amazon DynamoDB for low latency access, or Amazon S3 for larger batch processing. Utilize Amazon Redshift or Amazon Athena for analytics, enabling complex queries on stored data. Implement AWS CloudWatch for monitoring and alerting on data processing activities. 15. What sets AWS apart from other cloud service providers in terms of data engineering capabilities? 
AWS stands out in data engineering due to its extensive range of integrated services, flexibility, and scalability. Services like AWS Glue offer powerful ETL capabilities, simplifying data preparation. Amazon Redshift provides robust data warehousing with advanced analytics options, while Amazon Kinesis enables real-time data streaming and processing. Additionally, AWS's global infrastructure ensures low latency and high availability, making it suitable for large-scale applications. The strong ecosystem allows seamless integration among services, empowering engineers to build efficient and scalable data pipelines tailored to specific needs. 16. How do you approach learning new AWS tools or services when they're introduced? Learning new AWS tools and services involves several strategies. First, I explore the official AWS documentation and white papers to understand the features and capabilities. Then, I engage in hands-on practice by setting up a free-tier AWS account to experiment with the tool in real-world scenarios. Additionally, I participate in online communities and forums to gain insights and tips from other users. Attending webinars and AWS events also helps in keeping updated on best practices and emerging trends. Finally, I often leverage online courses or certifications for structured learning. 17. Describe how you balance security and efficiency when designing AWS solutions. When designing AWS solutions, balancing security and efficiency involves implementing a layered security approach while optimizing performance. This entails using AWS Identity and Access Management, IAM, to enforce least privilege access, ensuring only authorized users have access to sensitive resources. Utilizing AWS Virtual Private Cloud, VPC, for network isolation enhances security, while AWS CloudFront can improve content delivery efficiency. Incorporating encryption for data at rest and in transit is essential, yet leveraging managed services like AWS Lambda can enhance scalability without compromising security, enabling rapid deployment and reduced operational overhead. 18. How would you implement a system to detect and prevent fake user comments at scale using AWS services? To implement a system for detecting and preventing fake user comments at scale using AWS services, I would utilize Amazon Comprehend for natural language processing to analyze comment sentiment and identify patterns indicative of spam or fake comments. Additionally, AWS Lambda can handle real-time processing of incoming comments, triggering functions that evaluate each comment against predefined rules. Amazon DynamoDB would store user comment data and metadata for quick access, while Amazon SNS could send alerts for suspicious activity. Implementing AWS WAF can help prevent automated bots from submitting fake comments, ensuring a more authentic user interaction experience. 19. Explain your approach to selecting a customer sample for pre-launch testing of a new streaming show on Amazon Prime Video. When selecting a customer sample for pre-launch testing, I focus on ensuring a diverse representation of the target audience. This includes varying demographics, viewing habits, and regional preferences. Utilizing Amazon's data analytics tools, I analyze past engagement metrics to identify segments that align with the new show's themes. I also consider customer feedback channels to capture insights from previous launches. Random sampling techniques can help avoid biases, while A-B testing can provide further validation of the sample's effectiveness in gauging audience response. 20. How would you use AWS services to improve parcel handling and logistics efficiency at Amazon? Utilizing AWS services can significantly enhance parcel handling and logistics efficiency. Implementing AWS Lambda for serverless computing allows real-time processing of parcel data without provisioning servers. Amazon S3 can store large volumes of logistics data, while Amazon DynamoDB provides fast and scalable database solutions for tracking parcels. AWS IoT Core can connect devices for real-time monitoring of package conditions. Additionally, Amazon CloudWatch can monitor system performance and trigger alerts for anomalies, ensuring smooth operations and timely deliveries. This integrated approach streamlines workflows, reduces delays, and boosts customer satisfaction. 21. What is Amazon Simple Email Service, SES, and how can it be used in data engineering workflows? Amazon Simple Email Service, SES, is a scalable email service designed for sending and receiving emails securely. In data engineering workflows, SES can facilitate automated notifications, alerts, and reporting by integrating with applications that require email communication. For instance, when data processing jobs complete, SES can send status updates or error notifications to stakeholders. Additionally, SES can be used to send transactional emails, such as confirmations or reports generated from data pipelines, enhancing user engagement and operational efficiency. 22. How many S3 buckets can be created by default, and what considerations should be made when working with S3 for data storage? Amazon S3 allows the creation of up to 100 buckets per AWS account by default. If more buckets are needed, a service limit increase request can be submitted. When working with S3 for data storage, several considerations should be taken into account. These include understanding the cost implications of storage classes, implementing proper access controls and encryption for data security, 
and using lifecycle policies for managing data retention. Additionally, planning for data redundancy and considering performance based on access patterns is crucial for optimal use of S3. 23. Explain the concept of elastic IP addresses in AWS and their limitations. Elastic IP addresses in AWS are static IPv4 addresses designed for dynamic cloud computing. They allow users to allocate a public IP address that can be associated with any instance in their account. This flexibility enables seamless failover to another instance in case of a failure, ensuring high availability. However, there are limitations. Each account is allowed a maximum of five elastic IP addresses per region, and charges apply if not associated with a running instance. Proper management is essential to avoid unnecessary costs and ensure efficient resource utilization. 24. How would you design and implement ETL processes using AWS services? To design and implement ETL processes using AWS services, start by identifying data sources, such as databases or streaming data. Use AWS Glue for data extraction, leveraging its crawlers for schema discovery. For transformation, utilize AWS Lambda for serverless processing or AWS Glue's built-in ETL capabilities to clean and enrich data. Load the transformed data into a target data store, like Amazon Redshift or Amazon S3. Implement scheduling with AWS Step Functions or AWS Glue workflows. Monitor the process using Amazon CloudWatch to ensure reliability and performance. This approach enables scalable, efficient ETL workflows. 25. Describe your experience with using AWS services for big data analytics and machine learning workflows. My experience with AWS services for big data analytics includes leveraging Amazon EMR for big data processing which allowed me to run large-scale data transformations using Apache Spark. I have utilized Amazon Redshift for data warehousing, enabling efficient querying of massive datasets. For machine learning, I have worked with Amazon SageMaker to build, train, and deploy machine learning models at scale. Additionally, AWS Glue has been instrumental in creating ETL pipelines for data preparation and transformation, facilitating seamless integration with other services, enhancing workflow efficiency in analytics and machine learning projects. In this video, we explored the top 25 AWS data engineer interview questions and provided insightful answers to help you prepare effectively. With the growing demand for data professionals, understanding these concepts is crucial for acing your interviews. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced engineer, mastering these questions will enhance your confidence and skill set. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more valuable insights and resources. Your support helps us create more content to assist you on your career journey. Thank you for watching.